Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Uh, today's video, we're gonna be talking about things we like about Dublin, things we like about living in Dublin. Naomi has been in Dublin for two years now, pretty much. I've been here uh, basically my, my entire life. So this video is going to break down the things that we enjoy about Dublin, break down the things that we really like to do what we like to see around here in Dublin, the culture, and a couple of the different things that we think you would enjoy if you were to come and visit Dublin. And we didn't prepare five things. No, we prepared six things. <laughs> Hope you enjoy. So the first thing that we really like about Ireland, obviously Ireland is an island and it's pretty small here, so you can get around pretty easily and see the different kind of coastlines. Um, of Ireland and especially here in Dublin um, it's obviously directly located uh, by the sea so even though you're in the big city um, you're at the seaside pretty fast and can kind of escape the city and the madness of you know having people around you all day long basically yeah there's surprisingly there's a lot of nice beaches in Ireland um, specifically in Dublin you'll find a really nice beach called Sandy Mount Beach, not too far from here, the Grand Canal Dock area. If you just literally walk this way behind us, you'll find Sandy Mount Beach. Um, there's also a few other nice coastal spots like Hoth as well is a really nice one. Dunleary is another nice one as well. Um, there's a whole kind of massive selection of areas that you'll be able to find very easily. You can get a uh, public transport called the Dart which is like the, the train that connects a lot of the, the seaside villages and spots and also the inner city as well. So that's certainly something to check out when you are here in Dublin is to go jump on the dart and see where it takes you um, and get off and enjoy the, the seaside. Special recommendation that we would have, I'd say, is Dunleary on Sundays. Yep. They have a really nice market there with like amazing donuts and rolls and like sushi and everything that you can basically dream of and you can then enjoy your food or coffee, whatever you got, um, directly on the port. And um, if, you, if you're lucky and it is a nice day out, um, you will be able to see seals. Sometimes we saw dolphins there as well. So like it's a really, really nice area. Yeah, like a lot of people seem to, they, they do think when they're living in Ireland for a long time, you fail to, to really understand that like Ireland, I know it is pretty north in terms of like the, the, the globe, like we're pretty high up and it is it is a very cold climate most of the year, but we do have very nice coastal areas. And that's certainly the first thing that we would say is a must do when you are in Dublin um, or Ireland in general is to come here in the warmer months. So try and come here in June, July, August. There's no guarantee that you're gonna get sun because yeah it's it's really unpredictable when it comes to to weather but you will certainly get some nice weather in those months um, depending on when you come and if you do go to the seaside because Hoth, Bray, Dunleary even here on the Grand Canal docks you're gonna see some really cool stuff you might even see some really some like Naomi said some seals and dolphins there's been whales spotted on certain coasts of Ireland as well so yeah if you're curious about that stuff come and check it out if you want to see whales though make sure to go to the west side <laughs> Lamb Bay, like the west side of Ireland Lamb Bay Island is one the Aran Islands are another on the west coast to check out and uh, but yeah the coastal area that's number one for us on the things we like about Ireland. The second point on our list would be that uh, we have loads of nice parks here all around Dublin and um, for example Phoenix Park which I heard is the largest park in uh, Europe In Europe. and um, Stevens Green as well would be a very nice example where you can see um, a lot of kind of seabirds and stuff like that but it is directly located in the city so you don't have to go very far to uh, in nature. Yeah, Stevens Green is a really interesting park. You'll, you'll find a lot of like locals go to Stevens Green whenever there's nice weather out. Um, you'll see a lot of people kind of congregate in Stevens Green. Sometimes there's live music as well. There's bandstands. There's lots of things to do in that little specific area as well. And just behind Stevens Green, you'll find a park as well called the Ivy Gardens, which 
is kind of like a hidden gem of Dublin uh, of Dublin city it's a much quieter much smaller park with lots and lots of cool trees and nature and it's definitely something to check out as well if you are someone that does like to just go for a stroll in a park on a quiet Sunday afternoon but those three parks Phoenix Phoenix Park Stevens Green and the Ivy Gardens would be the top three in terms of actual parks. Good to mention as well might be that we have the... There's some swans flying by, oh my god! <laughs> Good to mention as well would maybe be that we have botanical gardens here in Ireland as well. So in case we ever come out of lockdown and those places will be open again, you will be able to go to the botanical gardens where you will see a lot of kind of nice plants, obviously local stuff, but also um, kind of jungle uh, flowers. <laughs> flowers are pretty to look at and they smell nice. Okay, so number three on the list would be uh, traditional pubs, clubs, the clubbing scene, the nightlife of Dublin um, and of Ireland in general is, I think it's definitely up there. Um, in terms of Europe anyways it's definitely up there in one of the top places in Europe like you will find a lot of traditional pubs in Temple Bar for example which is just slap bang in the center of Dublin city uh, there you will be charged a hell of a lot more uh, for for drink and for food but it's definitely something to check out in terms of the culture you'll see a lot of traditional music um, and you will be able to really enjoy yourself. I think you'll, be, you'll meet a lot of cool people um, there in Temple Bar. And then from there, there's, a, there's other streets like Westmoreland Street as well, which you'll find a lot of kind of no, uh, nightclubs. It's more of a younger scene there, much less touristy. Um, but in general, the places to check out is the traditional pubs. So like the, the old Irish pubs, you get like a certain smell when you're sitting in there. It smells like burnt wood and cigarettes. Basically. It's really, really windy here, so I hope you can hear us. But uh, yeah, that's just part and parcel of, of this is, is the weather. <laughs> Maybe to mention as well, if you really want to check out a very traditional Irish pub with like live music, um, would be the Cobblestone in Smithfield. It's a little bit out of the city, so like you have to walk kind of 10, 15 minutes. Um, out of the city towards Houston Station, but there you will find like very traditional Irish music. You will find people that actually speak Irish as well, and not only English. And um, yeah, the pines there are really good as well. Yeah, so number three on our list is the pubs, the nightlife, and yeah, that's number so, three. So, number four um, would be employment opportunities. Obviously, that's not something for a vacation or a short term stay, but if you're looking to relocate, for a longer time, um, Dublin is definitely the place to go in Europe, especially if you're working in tech, for example, or if you have a second language. So like, um, if, if you would look, for example, at the team I work in right now, um, I think we have like six different nationalities just there. And um, the reason why there is so much tech around Dublin is that uh, we have very low tax rates here. So for the company itself, it's a very low tax rate, but also um, for your employment. So like, for example, um, back in Germany, I used to pay nearly twice the taxes on my um, salary that I pay right now here in Dublin. Yeah, it's incredibly diverse. Uh, one thing about Dublin in terms of, of work, all of the companies that are here, a lot of them like Facebook, Oracle, HubSpot, uh, Google, Salesforce, all of these companies, they're all located, most of them around this area here on the Grand Canal Dock area. Um, you'll find a lot of them kind of spotted around if you do just briefly walk along here. Um, obviously, a lot of people are working remotely at the moment, which kind of, it, it does hurt the diversity and inclusivity a little bit because everybody's working from home. But uh, normally before COVID, everybody would be in the office together, a uh, really cool setting and it's just a really nice environment um, to be around. Like, you'll meet people from every type of culture in Dublin here, uh, because people do come from all around the world to work here, because the tech is here, the low tax rates are here uh, for companies and for workers as well, and 
yeah, there's there's not much more to say. Like that, that's number four for us is the diversity and the work opportunities. And uh, number five. Cinco. It's the crack. <laughs> the crack. I love cocaine. Some people might not know what I'm saying when I'm referring to this, but it's the crack of the Irish people. And um, basically the sense of humor is so unique here in Ireland. Like you're, you're only you're only really going to get a grasp of it and truly understand it when you're here in Dublin or here anywhere in Ireland. Irish people just have a certain way of speaking, a certain way of communicating, whether it's like a little nod or a wink or just saying certain slang terms like how are you going? What's the story? Story horse, things like that. How you keeping, pal? How are you keeping, pal? Like, <laughs> what's the story horse? What's the crack? Like, there's certain things that Irish people and the Irish culture. It's it's, it's a very it's, like I said, it's a very diverse community. But at the same time, the grassroots of the Irish people is it's still very strong here, and you see that in how local people communicate to each other, and it's something definitely to to experience. Um, when you do come here yeah something to mention as well like when you first come here don't think that you will understand it all like um it took me personally a while like maybe six or seven months to even slightly understand what was going on <laughs> to be honest so like um if people are laughing around you it's just because you don't get the joke to be honest <laughs> yeah uh like the first time that i as we were saying in our first video like when i first asked naomi to film me in the gym she didn't understand me like because of my accent i approached her obviously the gym was pretty loud and whatever i said to her at the time she just didn't understand me she just went along and took the phone and then filmed the video but like i understood it from the context in the end yeah but like there, there is just a, a certain way that people here communicate um, that that local people understand and that we we will like irish people are very open they're very warm they will try and communicate with everybody around them no matter where you're from it's just it might take some time to to get used to it and to to understand what the feck people are saying <laughs> wow wow so and number six would be guinness and um, i know you can probably buy guinness everywhere in the world but it's really different when you come to ireland so like back in germany i used to go to an irish pub i even worked in an irish pub for like a year or two but um, the Guinness quality is definitely different here. Um, you might not like it, to be honest, a lot of people don't, but uh, it's definitely a thing that you should try out. Yeah, Guinness, like this here in Dublin, we have the Guinness Storehouse, which to be honest, that would be nearly number one, I'd say, on if I was to do a list of things to actually do when you come to Dublin, the Guinness Storehouse would be up there close to the top. Um, there's also Jameson as well, but Guinness is just pure Irish. Like it's it's almost like the blood of the Irish people is in that. Um, it's just something that you really have to come and try for yourself. It's completely different to whether you get a Guinness somewhere in Spain or Germany or anywhere else. You need to come and experience Irish Guinness from an Irish pub sit back get your get get your the top lip creamy with like with the with the i don't know what you call it the cream guinness beard uh guinness beard yeah <laughs> but yeah it's 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 a unique experience um, fun, yeah. and something i'm very passionate about as well fun fact maybe about guinness uh, i once heard a rumor that because it's so rich in iron that uh, pregnant women like decades or whatever amount of years ago were told to drink a guinness um, while being pregnant just to like keep their iron levels on top there yeah and um, that's actually true as well my my mom um, born and raised in Ireland she when she was pregnant she remembers ner like nurses coming into the hospital with pints of Guinness for pregnant women like that have just had their babies to in order to basically they they, they, they thought that it would like refill their iron levels or something like that <laughs> like that's this is just like it's literally only could happen in Ireland um, but yeah those are really the six quick things that we really do enjoy about Ireland and what we enjoy about living in Dublin. Obviously, right now, it's very different because we're, like, we're in lockdown, the whole COVID situation. 
Um, but yeah, I think once everything eventually goes back to the way it was and businesses start to recover and people can travel, definitely, if you're watching this from outside of Ireland, come visit here and yeah, have the crack, have, have some, some good fun and enjoy a pint of Guinness. Ireland is definitely worth a visit. Yeah. So thanks for tuning in and see y'all in the next video. Bye.